All right, welcome back, you guys. Today we are talking about the advantages of offline marketing. Sounds a little strange when I'm normally focusing on digital marketing, but we're going to talk about what it is and why it works. So, you know the routine, buckle up, cue the theme music, and let's head on in. I ran marketing departments in corporate America for 10 years and then ran a digital agency for over another 10 years. So I know their roadmap to online success and that formula always includes producing content to share your message from your marketing message to sales and delivery. Hi, I'm Jennifer Neal and you're listening to The Content Toolbox. I believe the secret to finding and creating raving fans online is through you. In building relationships through stories that share who you really are, create genuine, crazy, raving fans that keep begging you to take their money. And on this podcast, we'll be talking strategies, tactics, tips, and more with myself and other industry experts. So buckle up and start your engines because it's go time. Okay, offline marketing. What exactly is offline marketing? Well, it's um, kind of exactly what it sounds like. It's things that are not online. This is going to go back to traditional marketing. If you think about having an integrated marketing strategy, meaning you're trying to reach all of your people through all of the different media that they want to consume, where we're looking for them is in all different places. Because Contrary to a lot of popular belief and poor millennials, they get stuck with this, is people are not online 100% of the time. And more to the point, one of the biggest advantages of offline marketing is not a lot of people are doing it now. So digital marketing is easy, it's relatively inexpensive, and it's so saturated. It's kind of like before when, uh, I talked about this in another episode, but when like Google AdWords were all the rage and everything. And that's how everybody launched programs and sold online. Right. And then everybody moved to like that went away and now everybody's on Facebook ads. Well, right now, all the rage, especially thanks to global wide pandemic is everything's online. So how are you standing out? And I think that that is one of the biggest advantages to offline marketing. So why do we want to stand out? I want to tell you guys a quick story about when I was in college and, um, I really did not want to stand out. So uh, as some of, you know, I, uh, let's see, I started off as a science major. I was majoring in biology because I was going to be a geneticist. I went to a pre-med school. I was ready to do this, right? Totally wanted to be a geneticist. However, I was working as a graphic designer uh, fresh out of high school and all while I was going through college. So in my third year at a college, I was like, oh, I think that doing this marketing thing would be a lot of fun. Plus if I'm a doctor, like I'm always going to be on call. Right. And I don't always want to be on call. So instead I think I'll do this marketing thing. Cause it sounds like a lot of fun and I can really help businesses and, you know, get, be creative and do fun things. And apparently also own my own business, which means that I am always on call, but that's for another day. So (laughs) what I did in my, it was like the end of my third year and I'm like, all right, I want to switch colleges. Right. And so I looked, I'm like, you know what? I am not going to a marketing school right now. I am not, um, looking at all the advertising in the business and all that stuff. Like they didn't have those kinds of programs available. So I was like, where can I transfer? Where can I go? And I grew up here in small town, Idaho and small town, Idaho happens to have one of the best liberal arts colleges in the Western region, actually. So, um, I grew up in the same town where that liberal arts college was 4.0 student, blah, blah, blah. So I basically had a full ride scholarship. So when I was looking at how do I get out of Idaho and go to a marketing and design school, it was really expensive, like a lot, right? (laughs) So many, tough decisions and tears later, I decided, fine, I will stay at this school. And it turns out it was a great experience to do. But at the point in time, I was really still working for the man, doing a job, right? And I didn't, uh, I was not understanding, wanting, or embracing the entrepreneurial lifestyle at all. 
so at that point in time, I pretty much wanted to melt into the background, right? So I ended up switching my degree around and thankfully I was able to do so because it was a liberal arts school. So I already had the credits and things like that, that I needed to be able to switch. So it really kind of made my switch no problem at all. And I was still able to graduate on time, but I ended up majoring in art with a photography emphasis. And then I minored in graphic design, journalism, and theater. So it turns out that all of those things are really kind of ideal for marketing because I learned how to tell a story and how to share a story visually and how to present a story. And one of the things that I did, so when I got involved in theater, I was like, oh, hell no, I do not want to be on stage. Uh Uh-uh. I want, (laughs) I want to be part of this theater thing, but I am the person behind the scenes pulling the strings, right? So I went into stage management and I loved it and I was really good at it. And for a long time after I left college, I was like, yeah, I am not the person on center stage. That's not me. I own a business, a digital agency, where I work for other companies putting them center stage. And I'm the one behind the scenes pulling all the strings. And a while ago, after I called my shot and said, all right, we are moving out of the just done for you service. We're going to niche down and offer very select done for you. And we are going to help people out on more of a coaching level. (sighs) That has been a really fun journey, but at some point, and I don't know how I actually did this, but I actually like never put the two and two together that I was the one that then had to be out on stage, right? Like I wasn't behind the scenes pulling the strings anymore. I'm having to hand those jobs off to someone else. And that is exactly, well, it's kind of like what we're talking about here with offline marketing. Like, why am I telling this story? Because you have to do the thing that's going to make you and your business stand out. And and not just the thing, but like multiple things, right? And I think that one of those things that can really, really help in making you actually stand out and get the attention of people is to be not only the person on stage with the spotlight, but you are the one that's doing the weird things that gets them to notice. So offline marketing, things like handwritten notes, physical mail, lumpy mail, boxes. People love getting packages, right? Custom boxes. I know we, we've done an episode on that, talking about uh, presenting different ways, like different things for people to open and engage and use their other sensory, I don't even know what the word is, but like tactile sense and smell. And, you know, like we want them to engage with you in more than just like reading on a screen or looking at their phone. We want them to actually hear, which they can still hear digitally, right? We want them to see, smell, touch, taste if possible. So any of those things that you can do that are offline are not being done very much right now. Um, It used to be super traditional marketing. That's exactly how it was done. You would go... (laughs) cold calling, knocking on doors, you would buy a list, you would send a whole bunch of mailers and you would follow up with that. And then digital marketing came along and we're like, oh, we can also follow up by email. And then, oh, we can also reach people online. And it was cheaper than sending out, like buying a list and sending out all of these postcards and mailers and things, right? So that is why, well, part of why everything went digital because it was cheaper and it's easier and it's faster. You get a better response. You actually get a better response than a lot of offline things, especially from like guerrilla marketing tactics. So what offline marketing allows you to do though, like let's talk about, uh, well, right now they're not really prevalent, but trade shows. Uh, There's a lot of, you know, in-person trade shows that you can go to. That's offline marketing. I'm not a huge fan of the cost of like billboards and things like that, but for certain industries in certain areas, they make a lot of sense. So sometimes things like that really work for digital marketers wanting to use offline methods. You're probably going to be looking at things that you can send in the mail or delivery, those different kinds of things, because that is how you're going to be able to get people to engage, get people to open your open rates. (laughs) are going to be sky high because 
you're sending a handwritten letter or a box or something like that. People love to get that stuff, right? That's why Dream 100 strategies where they're mailing stuff out. That's why that works. That's why lumpy mail campaigns work because people get something and they're like, oh, what is this? Who's sending me a package, right? Especially more than uh, bulky items, especially more so than just like a letter. Because a lot of times we know that those are printed by a computer and it's like, oh, whatever. Although I still get caught by some of them. Be a little handwritten label or something. And I'm like, oh, what's this? And open it up and like a oh, sales letter, chuck, right? But if that same person had sent me a box with something cool, I might be like, ah, okay. Let's check this out, right? So it's, I really think that it's a fantastic way of, of standing out to your market. So I also want to share with you guys, a lot of you guys have probably already seen my content marketing presentation. But for those of you who haven't, I do want to pull up some slides here and just kind of share some of this so that you can visually see for those of you watching on YouTube and those of you that aren't, I highly suggest that you go watch it. And of course, subscribe and uh, like and share and all those good things. But what we want to do is I want to show you the visualization of the content marketing formula and how the offline marketing can really play into this game. All right. So this is the content marketing formula. So I want you to kind of take a look at this and we're going to think about like this area in here, this little circle, we're going to say that this is your business. This is your business world. Okay. And out here, this highway type thing out here, this is where your prospects and potential clients and all of those people are at, right? It's where they're living. So this becomes, <laughs> it's ironic how this analogy really works. So this actually becomes like a content super highway because like the digital world, this is, this is like light rail, fast moving stuff because there's so much traffic out there and so many people going into this digital realm that there's all this traffic out here and people are just whizzing by, right? So it's hard to get their attention. So let's walk through the model here really quick and then I'll show you why offline marketing really makes a lot of sense. Okay, if this is where our people are at and this is our business, what we wanna do is we wanna create a message that connects our story to our prospects. That is in the form I recommend in the form of a story of some sort, we are going to connect with people on an emotional level, right? Then we have a connection. We've, we've opened up an, an off ramp here to our world. And what we want to do then is we want to optimize this. So we're attracting people in. See, we're drawing a little arrow. We're attracting people into our world and we're expanding our reach. So instead of it being a single line, we are filling this whole thing up. Like we're broadening the reach of that entire message. That is where content repurposing and different types of media come into play. Remember that because we'll come back to it. Then what we want to do is we want to get people to notice. So here's the people out here buzzing by, right? We want to get them to notice us and then turn their attention to us. Okay. So they are turning their attention for those we haven't already got. They're getting sucked in here into this, uh, <laughs> this Death Star looking thing. So they're going to, they're coming into our attraction bridge, right? Okay, once they are in our world, we want them to engage. So imagine that all these little satellite circles out here are our different offerings. So maybe we have a free opt-in. Maybe we have like a $47 product. Maybe we have a low-end course or a group coaching thing. Up here is our inner circle or our mastermind or our done-for-you services. Um, but these are all the different ways that we help people. So we're bringing them into our world. We want to get them to engage in some way. Now, some of them will engage here in freebie world. So they're going to drop right in. They're going to pay a toll of their email address and engage into our world. Some of them will immediately spend money and jump over here. Some of, some of them will kind of come in and just bounce around. That's exactly what we want because we want to connect all of these pieces together here with a nurture. We want to make sure that everybody that comes into our world knows our entire offerings. So if they do want to bounce around, they can. They can come back in here and bounce around and they can buy all of our things. We're okay with that. 
All right, so then the other thing that we want to do is we want to track what's happening. So we want to track the metrics from all of our engagement, from what's being purchased, from how is our content doing? How are our signs doing? Like we want to follow the numbers of all of these things, track this information, and we're going to use it to continue optimizing what we're doing to continue our reach and continue our sales in here. So that is the content marketing formula visualized. And if you look at this whole thing all together, here's an easy way to remember it. So create content. So we're going to do create, optimize, notice, turn, engage, nurture, and track. We are spelling the word content. Pretty easy to remember, right? Awesome. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it on this screen right here. So where I think that offline marketing has a lot of advantages is first of all, right in here in our optimized step, because when we're optimizing our message, expanding the reach of it and getting it to more people, what we are doing is we're finding more ways to reach people. Okay. So if all we're doing is optimizing right now with content repurposing, so we have like a YouTube channel, we have a blog, we maybe have a podcast, we're putting posts out on different social channels, that's digital optimization. How else can we further optimize that? We can do it by creating books, actual printed books, custom boxes, mailers. We can put our message on trinkety things that you can share. You can, I mean all sorts of physical products, tangible things that you can send out to people in a way that is going to get them to notice you, right? Noticing is definitely what we want because that's what gets them to turn, turn their attention to us. But some people, especially with this information superhighway out here happening. So some people are like, they're off the grid, right? They're out here. They're like taking the rural route. They're cruising around. Well, if we're optimizing and we've got mail that's going to also take the lazy slow route and get to them in person after a while, uh, it's still going to reach them. But we have, there's so much less traffic happening out there that the engagement is going to mean so much more because you're reaching them in a different way. They're not just having to find you on this busy information highway, right? You're catching them out here. You're, you're going out into the suburbs and you are taking your message out there by parcel post with your little box going around and being like, here, check this out. I got this for you. And they're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I want to be part of your world. So then they still come in through the same, they notice, they turn their attention, they still come right into our world and they engage because they are giving us more of their information and money, which is ultimately what we want, right? So now that we are also in our world here, what I want to talk about is this nurturing path. So most of us have more than one product, program, service, whatever offering that we are doing. We want to make sure that we are letting people know all of these different things that we do. So offline marketing can also help with that because you can send them other things, whether it is simply, you know, brochure of your um, value ladder, like all the offerings that you have, a thank you note, anytime somebody actually engages in one of these things, an actual printed thank you note, and something that's like a welcome and wow, like keep them going, or just something that's a retention. So they've been in your world for a while and you're like, hey, you know what? I just wanted to say thanks. Here you go giving him some stuff. So paying attention to offline marketing tactics lets us look at where people are at on the customer journey. Are they still out here as prospects? Are they coming in? Are they already in our world? Are they a low end client? Are they a higher end client? Like what can we do to help move them into here and up our scale? A lot of times the offline marketing things are going to reach people in a different way. So it really can support that customer journey. And I think that that is super important when you are trying to stand out and you're trying to get people's attention. And I think it's a great way to create a really valuable integrated marketing plan that is going to reach more people. Now, where you're going to reach people, how you're going to reach them, all of that stuff is going to be different depending on you and your product and your service and the customer journey and how you want to engage and budget and all those things. But look at multiple different kinds of offline marketing strategies 
there are plenty. There are plenty of different ways that you can print up, you know, different printed things or different trinkety things or different swag or like whatever you want to call it and get that stuff into people's hands and local live events, individual mailings, however you want to do that to get stuff into people's hands, paying attention to where they're at in the customer journey, that is going to get you noticed and appreciated in such a different way than just sticking with online marketing strategies. So I am a firm believer of offline. And in terms of like the pendulum, we've talked about the pendulum before of where marketing started and swung all the way to the digital realm. And I really believe that the pendulum is coming back. And if you want to be ahead of the curve, embrace a full integrated marketing strategy and really take a look at how you can integrate offline marketing strategies into your entire customer journey. That's going to be super important to continue bringing in new leads and to continue converting them and take them along the journey until you stop selling them things. Really? You keep people happy, they will keep buying, right? Okay. So that is all I will get off of my soapbox for here. And uh, thanks for playing along and watching the the content <laughs> uh, slides that we have here with the, the Death Star model. But I, I just really hope that if there's one thing you take away from this, it's looking at offline marketing strategies. And you knew it was coming, right? There's always something fun at the end, right? If you want to see what a fun offline marketing strategy actually looks like as part of an integrated marketing. So we actually have two different things that we have on the front end right now that you can actually get involved with and see right away. So the first is the Smarter Content Formula. We actually took a virtual event and turned it into a physical product. And so there's actually books and swag and all sorts of things that are going to help you learn. There's secret audio files. Like there's some really cool stuff that touch all of the different senses inside that box. And that is a separate product. So you can check that one out at smartercontentformula.com, or you can also get involved in one of our workshops. And I've talked about these workshops before. They are super fun. We actually walk through, I help you to develop true stories that dig down into the real why of the matter and create that engagement. So it's that initial connection between your business and the people, all of your prospects, creating that initial message through story. So we do that on these workshops. They are so much fun. They are virtual workshops. However, we have a fun box that goes out and uh, there's some fun coasters and maybe a rocks class. And maybe we all have like a happy hour after we get done with the event. So that is another fun way that we are incorporating offline tactile things in a digital product. So if you want to check out our use of that integrated marketing strategy, that combined physical fun things in a box with a virtual event, check out the repurposingfasttrack.com and you can get in on the next workshop. We host those every single month and you can be part of our virtual happy hour. So I hope that uh, we see you somewhere in our world and let me know any questions. Let me know if you have any other ideas. And also, if you'd like to be a guest on the show, make sure you visit the content toolbox and uh, apply to be a guest on the show. So awesome. Till next time. Thanks again, you guys. We will catch you on the flip side.